Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedia. Today we're going to be explaining how to configure a MIDI controller in Studio One. So let's say that I just came from the from the music store and I got myself a little, you know, a little two octave MIDI controller that I'm going to be using to program beats or you know to write um, synth parts or uh, strings, you know, virtual instruments in general. And uh, the first thing I want to do as soon as I buy a MIDI controller. If it came with any kind of driver or software, I definitely want to make sure that I install all of that. After that, uh, if I'm planning to use it in Studio One, I need to configure it with the software so that the program will see it as an available device. So, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on Studio One Preferences. And uh, I'm going to have my Preferences window. As we explained before, there are five tabs, and I'm going to go to the external devices tab, um, and you're going to be able to identify it because the logo of the external devices tab, it's a um, MIDI port, as you can see here. So the external devices tab will show a list of available MIDI controllers, um, MIDI surfaces, MIDI keyboards, and as you can see, the only thing that I can see right now is the QWERTY keyboard that comes with uh, Presona Studio One. So I want to make sure that when I finish this tutorial, my actual MIDI controller appears on this list so it is available to use with the software. So what do I have to do? I need to add it. In order to do that, I'm going to click down here and Add. And I'm going to see the Add Device window. This window has three parts, one on the left, uh, the second part is on the top right, and then the third part, bottom right. I'm going to work on the left part first. This part, you can see a list of folders that contain different um, brands, and basically Studio One has all these predefined brands and models that you could basically just click and it'll automatically map it, but the truth is that mine it's not here, so I'm just going to create, click on new in, new keyboard, so I can make it, I can add it um, manually, which I encourage you to do that all the time, by the way. So if you go to new keyboard, and I'm selecting new keyboard, because, um, you know, realistically, it's a MIDI keyboard, it's a, it's a, a, a two octave MIDI controller, it's very simple, and it, re, it you know, it's a, it's a, it's a MIDI keyboard, so... If you click on new keyboard, you're going to see here on the top right, um, device model, it says new keyboard, you can change that, and then you have manufacturer. If you click there, you could type the manufacturer's name, which is Arturia. Then you have device name. If you click there, you can delete and then type the name. This one is called Mini Lab. So, at this point, I have told Studio One that the manufacturer is Arturia and the device name is Minilab. Now, the reality is that I haven't really paired the actual um, piece of gear with the software. And that is what we're going to be doing on the bottom right side, or the bottom right part of this window. And it has to do with the MIDI channels. Um, you want to make sure that the receive from and send to options are properly configured in order to pair the the piece of gear with the software. So it says receive from none. If you click there, oh there it is. You're gonna see your your um, MIDI controller. In my case the Arturia Mini Lab. So what I'm telling the program is that it is going to be uh, receiving MIDI information from the Arturia. Studio One will receive all the MIDI information from the Arturia Mini Lab. Whatever I do, um, it could be pressing a key, maybe pressing a pad if it has any pads, or moving a knob or anything like that. It's all MIDI information that um, Studio One is going to be receiving from my MIDI controller. You could also filter MIDI messages such as the aftertouch, program change, pitch pen, or controllers. That's totally option optional. I'm not going to be filtering anything. And then you have the send to. If you want to send MIDI information to a MIDI keyboard, let's say a MIDI keyboard that had analog output, um, so you could output that audio, you could use that. 
um, for the case of this tutorial, my MIDI keyboard does not have any um, sound in, inside. It's just a MIDI keyboard, that's it. So even if I send MIDI information to my Tura Mini Lab, it would not be able to output any audio. But if you have any other kind of um, keyboard, you might be able to use this option. Uh, then you have the split channels and default instrument input. I'm not going to click on any of that. Um, so at this point, just by, realistically, only by doing or by configuring the receive from um, option, I am pairing, I'm, I'm actually pairing my MIDI keyboard with my software. So if I press OK, you can see now that my Arturia Mini Lab is part of my external devices list, which means that it has um, it has been properly configured. I'm going to press OK, and that's it. My MIDI controller has been configured in Studio One. I hope you guys find this very helpful, and thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and you guys have a nice day. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.